Hello and welcome to another edition of Second Life Aviation Network's Intercontinental Flight Challenge. This week's flight challenge candidate is Natalia Petrova. Natalia has been involved with Second Life Aviation for a number of years now. She is active in the Second Life Navy's Second Fleet Role Play Group and holds the rank of Rear Admiral. Natalia is also an aircraft builder and has recently released her first plane, the Ice Tech T-700. This is an amazing airplane with some nice features and a very realistic flight model. Natalia has chosen the flight challenge to test this new aircraft as well as her own piloting skills. So, please set back and enjoy this edition of Intercontinental Flight Challenge, and we will see if our pilot and her aircraft have what it takes to complete this long-distance flight. Now, let me introduce our host and Czech pilot for this flight, Mr. Luke Flywalker. Hello and welcome to Second Life Aviation Network's Intercontinental Flight Challenge. I'm Luke Flywalker, and I will serve as narrator as we traverse the mainland continents, as well as Czech pilot for this flight. Our destination today is Port Caleta in southern Hedera It's a long way from here, that's for sure. As you saw in our open, Natalia walked around the plane for a pre-flight check and is now going over the T-700's checklist. This is one of the features of this plane that makes it so much fun to fly. As Natalia finishes her pre-flight procedures, let's take a look at her flight plan for Lake 1. With the map zoomed out, you can see just how long the whole flight is. It is a major undertaking, and I recommend that you plan for at least three hours of flight time. Now, let's zoom into our starting point, located at the Second Life Brazilian Marines Airfield, which is located on the northern coast of Gaeta 5. Once in the air, we will head west along the northern coast, turning south to make the channel connection to Corsica. Crossing into Corsica, we will turn south and follow this so-called waterway to the southern coast, turning west as we travel to our first refueling stop at Angels N2. Get ready for some security orbs and band lines and skyboxes, such as flying in Second Life. Okay, this is one of the challenges along the flight route uh, that can't really be avoided. Uh, this is supposed to be a waterway, which I think basically it is, but it's cluttered with so much junk down there that uh, it's hard to find a clear path to fly through, so just be very careful and take all the precautions ahead of time. Make sure your avatars uh, descripted and you have your draw distance and graphics set correctly, and you should do pretty good in places like this and also we do have a contingency plan if you do crash along the way you can uh, find the nearest uh, res point to the location where you crash and res a new aircraft and start from there so uh, we know it's going to happen and uh, with crossing this many sims uh, you're going to cross three or four hundred regions to complete this thing so uh, you can't expect everybody to make it through without crashing but so far, we're doing really well here. Okay, we're on 
long approach to our first refueling stop here at Angels N2. And uh, this is a pretty nice uh, approach path here with water sims leading right into the airport. And Natalia makes an excellent landing here. Now, uh, part of the challenge and part of the problem that you might run into is that the airports might not have the fuel system that your plane needs, or they might not have a fuel system at all. Well, you can do two options. You can res a fuel pump that is compatible with your plane, or you can use the onboard refueling system. But you must land at the approved uh, spots, and you must take the time to refuel. That's part of the long distance flight challenge. So Natalia has uh, refueled, and we're getting ready to take off again, and I'll be going over leg two with you here as we get airborne. Okay, that was a great takeoff there, Natalia. And here is the map of our flight plan. So we are headed for Half Moon Bay, and this is probably the easiest leg of the flight. So let's sit back and enjoy some scenery and some good music. ground here at Half Moon Bay. Another great landing here and we pull up to the fuel pumps to find out 
that they don't have the correct version of the Kelly pump here. Uh, this plane takes the version 3.1, so in this case Natalia raises the pump. Once refueled, we'll begin our journey south down the west coast of Satori. This is the longest leg of the flight, but this uh, west coast uh, journey is very scenic. Lots of uh, Linden Department of Public Works uh, projects to look at here, and it's just a nice flight. And we have some new changes down towards the south end that I'll tell you about as we near that area. So let's prepare for takeoff. Okay, so we took off from Half Moon Bay and then we traveled south, turning west across the top of this end of Satori and then down the west coast. Plenty of uh, Linden uh, Department of Public Work projects along this waterway to look at <coughs> if you want to do a little sightseeing on the way down. And down through this narrow channel and then we still have some uh, mostly water sims here to uh, traverse. And then a little tricky part right here, but not nearly as bad as it used to be. And I'm going to show you what that means in just a moment. If you make it through that little passage there, then you can move on down south. And now we've to the new connected waterway that uh, connects us over to the new Belisaria uh, houseboat area. And... Uh, very good and now there's a new uh, airstrip right here and it does have one Kelly version 3.1 fuel pump here uh, but uh, I would recommend that you land here this is kind of an optional fuel stop if you think your plane can make it all the way from Half Moon to Gen Sail, you can do it uh, so you could land there or we could go down here to Buffalo Springs and you can uh, res a pump there. Both places you'll probably, unless you have something that takes the Kelly 3.1 at the other place, uh, you'll have to res a fuel pump. But uh, I highly recommend the fuel stop here because this definitely is the longest leg of the flight as you can see. Now there's a couple options you have to get down uh, to Gen Cell. I, I suggest you follow that waterway as much as you can. Uh, it's relatively safe to fly over uh, land in uh, Belisaria. There are no band lines. There are security orbs. They're supposed to be set at 15 seconds, but not everybody set, uh, follows those rules, so sometimes you run into a short, uh, short band line. So uh, you'll have to uh, cross over this is a little bit tricky down as you get in this area down here as how you're going to make it to uh, uh, gin sill but uh, you're about going to have to go from here west like that and then on down and uh, and there you go you arrive safely at gin sill you can follow the coastline there if you want to uh, like I said, you can probably make it over land if you have all your uh, settings right and you stay stay at a decent altitude because there's not really a whole lot to see if you fly down low there. Uh, I would uh, recommend, uh, you know, four or five hundred meter altitude probably through that area. Okay, on with the flight. <laughs>
Oh, we don't know We think we're broken or alone It's not true Not for me, not for you Okay, we made it safely to Gensel Airport without incident, and Natalia was nice enough to res a Kelly 3.1 uh, fuel pump for me here at Gensel, so those of you who need that type of pump, we have one now for you here, and uh, we're getting ready to take off for legs 4 and 5 here, and we will fly south from here down to Giojo Golf Airport and a relatively easy flight over open water. We'll top off the fuel tanks there and then we will return north and fly up to Gateway International Airport as we move up the uh, west coast of Belisaria there. So. Uh, another relatively easy flight and then after that we've got one uh, more difficult flight ahead to get over to Abbott's uh, airfield and then uh, the final leg after that so uh, wish us luck so far so good Natalia's doing an excellent job here a uh, very professional pilot and uh, she has the uh, route laid out and she knows where she's going she knows what she's doing and uh, her new airplane is handling superbly so stay tuned for more as uh, we fly to the Jojo Golf.
Since we started the Intercontinental Flight Challenge a year ago, seven pilots have completed the flight. Six string burner, Evelyn Cateno, Celine Blackwing, Jenny Cass, Orwell Wemus, Daniel Lovejoy, and yours truly. If Natalia completes the flight today, that will make it eight. I'm pretty sure she's going to make it, but uh, you never know. It's a really long flight. Okay, we have refueled at Gateway and we are now preparing for takeoff. Our next stop is Historic Abbott's Airfield and then we'll refuel there and head on to Port Cowletta. The flight from here to Abbott's is maybe the most risky of the uh, whole flight there. We have to go over a lot of land, but uh, hey, I've made the flight a lot of times and uh, I think she can do it. So here we go.
And we made it. Congratulations to our newest flight challenge pilot, Natalia Petrova. Natalia did an excellent job on this flight, and it was a pleasure to ride along with her. She will receive the official SL Aviation Network Flight Challenge Certificate, and her name will be posted on the Wall of Fame at Gensel Airport. I'm sure Natalia is pleased with the performance of the T-700. If you're thinking about doing the flight challenge, you might consider doing it in a T-700. It's a great plane for this flight. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. If you're interested in doing a flight challenge, message me at Luke Flywalker Fittinger, and I'll send you an application. Fill that out, and we'll get you scheduled for a flight. That's it for this report. Stay safe, stay healthy, blue skies, and happy flying.